Good morning and thank you for joining us for today's service at New Testament Bible Church. Let's join Pastor Malcolm Milam for today's message. Oh, blessed Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, Lord, thanking you, Father, for today. Uh, we thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Father God, that your word falls on good ground. Uh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that your word produces. Uh, as scripture says, some 60, 100. Oh, Lord Jesus, we want this word to produce in our lives, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for practical application. We also thank you, uh, Lord Jesus, that uh, you cover us. No, we thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit who brings things back to our remembrance, uh, who unctions us, Father God, not this weird thing that uh, perhaps we have said about the Holy Spirit that is absolutely wrong. But we thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit, the Creator. Lord, we love you. We honor you. Your word says when two or three are gathered that you are in our midst. So, Father God, we know that you are in our midst. Uh, we thank you, Father God, how you have continued to bless us to do your work, to be your servants, Father God. We are obedient to you. Uh, we're slowing down, Lord Jesus. We're, we're getting back in the mold. However, Father God, we know that your grace is sufficient. We love you, Lord, and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, we all know that we've been going through uh, the Jesus' miracles. And uh, we've been dealing with the feeding of the 5,000 for, I know, a couple months. And when you look at the feeding of the 5,000, there's so many spiritual truths in the feeding of the 5,000. Mm -hmm. um, and so, the most amazing thing is somebody's going to cut their phone off so we don't hear the bleep, bleep, bleep. So you can hit mute or something. Is that you, Christian? Huh? That was you, baby? Huh? Wow. That was wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so with our, our foundation scripture, um, as usual, for the last month, couple months, have, is uh, uh, John, John 1, 1 through 14, and I'm going to skip down to 5, and then we're going to go into 10. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Um, and scripture reads, <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Skipping down to verse 10, it said, he was in the world. And we, what we know is that we are referencing Jesus. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now we know our key terms, uh, apostasy, Apostasy is a falling away or withdrawal, a defection from the faith. Uh, believe, to adhere to, trust, and rely on. A deity, a supernatural being considered divine or sacred. And then incarnate, this is the term applied to the appearance of the second person of the Godhead in the human form. In other words, God the Son coming to the earth as man. Mm -hmm. We know our objectives are. In, in, in God, we're going, to, we're, going to stay, we're going to stay on practical application, right? Because we can come to church and feel good, and then we leave, and we're like, okay, hold on, Lord, uh, I didn't get what I needed answered. Or how did this apply to my life? So what we know is with the practical application, what, what we're talking about, our objective in discussing these miracles is how Jesus responded, 
how the people responded, then what was the overall outcome? So you got to think the discussion that we're having about the feeding of the 5,000, as I continue to go over and read over and over, like I continue to get like these new revelations. Um, and so last week we entered our discussion, you know, we talked about church hurt. Uh, and that was an introduction to the actual subject matter that we'll be discussing today. The apostasy. The apostasy. We use this word. Now I want you guys to think about it. We've been dealing with the apostasy, uh, apostasy since the beginning of time. So this is the falling away from Christ. Mm -hmm. A quick reminder. Now when we talk about the apostasy, we're still discussing the feeding of the 5,000. Now, real quick, feeding of the 5,000, Jesus showed compassion on the people. If you want to go and read it, it's in chapter 6, uh, John 6. Jesus shows compassion on the people. We're going to discuss uh, perhaps compassion today. And then he tests Philip. He said, hey, where are you going to buy bread from? And we knew that Jesus was just testing Philip. And then we go to in, uh, Andrew finding the little boy who has the five loaves and the two fish. And then Jesus, with his organizational skills, hey, set the men down in 5,000. And then the women and the, and the children, they grouped them another way. And then what we know is God provided some overflow at the, eating, at the, at the end of the feeding of the 5,000. Mm -hmm. There was stuff left over. Right. And then Jesus sent the disciples off, and I was, I was thinking about this this morning. Jesus sent the disciples off, and he actually closed out the meeting. How many of y'all, when we see the preachers, they, 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 they got to go, they go in the back and <laughs> they hid. But literally, Jesus was like, hey, he sent the servants off and said, hey, guys, I'm going to close this meeting now. Y'all go and get to the other side. And then what they did was the people, the disciples, and we're going to discuss the word disciple. The disciples, the people, they asked Jesus, hey, show us another sign. Like Jesus has fed them. They seen the sign, and now the people are asking, hey, can you show us another sign? And what Jesus did was he said, hey, the only reason that you're following after me is because you have been fed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there was, this, there was this discussion about Jesus being the bread of life. And there was this dialogue between Jesus and the people. The bread of life. And they were like, man, what you talking about the bread of life? And then they started talking about, man, ain't you married, boy? Mm -hmm. Man, we know who you are. And they, we're, he's going through this discussion with these people. And they're like, do we believe or do we not believe? <laughs> and then you got to think we eventually end up transitioning to the church, the synagogue. We know that when you go to the synagogue, it was essentially a church. Mm -hmm. A church function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got the benediction, you got they did that's what they did in the synagogue. And then Jesus breaks down, he's in the he's in the church, and now Jesus is preaching. We transition to the church and he starts talking in symbolism. Eating my flesh and drinking my blood. And they were like, man, this dude is crazy. And Jesus was like, oh my goodness. And what we and I'll get into this a little later on. What Jesus was doing, he kept dialing down, trying to get to their heart. Like, I'm trying to explain this to you guys. What else do I need to do? I just fed you. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. I just did this. And what's what? Yeah. Now, our focus scripture in John 6, 60 through 67. And we're going to be on this next week also. Again, I'll be reading from the King James Version. It gets sticky right here. John 6, 60 through 67. And scripture reads, says, Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, He said to them, does this offend you? Remember we talked about offense last week. Verse 62 says, what then if I should see the son of man ascend where he was before? It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are truth. And they are life. 
But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. Mm -hmm. And he said, therefore I said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. For at that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. That's deep. Think about it. Many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. We're going to talk about what's back there. Then Jesus said to the twelve, you also want to go? You want to go away? I was like, ooh. And when you think about Jesus, he was like the disciples. And he's not talking about it. Again, we're going to break down the word disciple in a second. He said, many of them walk with him no more. Right. And then he went to his 12 and said, you want to go too? Come yeah. on. <laughs> Jesus, mm -hmm. the man who shows compassion, as his 12. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to get to stepping? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I want to break, we're going to break these scriptures down here. So, verse 6, he says, therefore, many, many of his disciples, when they heard this, Hard saying. He said, who can understand it? Now you remember his disciples, and we broke this down a couple of weeks ago. Disciples, his disciples indicates a second of three groups of hearers. The first group, you remember when you read scripture, it, it says the Jews. Mm -hmm. Then the second group is disciples. Disciples, when you break it down, it's either learners mm -hmm. or followers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes what we've done is we've mixed exegetic scripture and said, hey, the 12 disciples, these disciples left, the original disciples. No, when you read the context of the scripture, the disciples meant these followers, these learners, they left. Mm -hmm. So they were babes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember, these are the same people asking, hey, can you figure out, can you do another sign? Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, these are these people. Mm -hmm. And then the third group, we're talking about the 12 mm -hmm. yeah. apostles, the 12. So when you read it and you look at it, you're like, oh, okay. He's breaking it down for the Jews. He's breaking it down for these new followers, these people who just want him to do tricks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, feed me again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's breaking it down to his 12. Like, hey, y'all want to go too? Mm -hmm. And then we go to, it said, it's a hard saying. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on the version you read, hard in the Greek lexicon, scleros. Y'all know I don't use Greek too much. That's pretty good. I, I, I looked it up. <laughs> I had to look it up like four or five times to be able to say the word right. Scleros. Mm -hmm. It's found six times in the New Testament. Hard can mean rough, harsh, stern, severe, violent. So what they were saying was, man, what this dude is talking about, what he's preaching on is harsh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What this brother is preaching, man, this is stern what he's talking about. And if you knew, if you studied Jesus, you'd be like, man, really, Jesus was really straightforward. He was stern. Yeah. He was hard. He was right to the point. Now the word is sometimes used in the literal and often figuratively. Jesus' teaching was hard and offensive to many of the disciples, the followers. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to slow down on this part. And then it said, and we're still in six. It said. It said, who can understand it? Think about what, <laughs> who can understand it? Now let's grasp the meaning of understand it here. Understand means to comprehend as a fact or grasp clearly, to realize. Understand. Understand means to be informed or learn. Do you understand? What was that dude, Chris Tucker? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yeah. Yeah. Understanding. Watch this one. Understand is to take as a fact mm -hmm. or believe. Now, we're going to get a couple of scriptures, and I'm not going to go through all of them. But understanding in Job 28 and 28. And he said, and he said to a man, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and turn away from evil 
is understanding. They say, hey, man, if you turn away from evil, you got some understanding. Mm -hmm. Psalms 119 and 34 says, give me understanding that I may keep the law and observe it in my whole heart. David saying, Lord, hey, I need some understanding here. Yeah. Give me understanding that I may keep the law and observe it in my whole heart. Not half my heart. I need some understanding. Amen. Proverbs 2 and 11 says, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. Amen. Wait a minute. So, Amen. understand it going to keep me? Yes! Amen. Understand it going to keep you. Amen. It always amazes me, and I'm, uh, I'm not going to go here right now. i got to come back to that. Proverbs 18 and 2. It says, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding. Yeah. Your understand you ever told me your understanding is off? It says the fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Mm -hmm. See, have you met some people? You be like, wait a minute, man, that don't make. That's not what that says. And then specifically, when we talk about scripture and the word, be like, come on, pastor, that 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 ain't what the word said, brother. We appreciate you hacking and spitting and doing all, but that is that your understanding is off. You know, maybe we're gonna come back next Sunday. You may be on the next Sunday, but that is not what that word is saying. Amen. And so as we go through this transition after COVID, I'm t hey y'all, it's the word. We see like okay, we see who's in control of all this. Amen. And so the word, understand it. I like this one. Second Timothy says. Think over what I say. This is Paul talking to Timothy. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Wow. Amen. And at first I won't read through all the scriptures, but I am. And if y'all want the scriptures, uh, I give them to you. Ephesians 4 and 18 says, they are darkened in their understanding. <laughs> Alienated <laughs> from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. Mm. Last one, 2 Corinthians 2 and 12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely God has given to us. Mm. Man, God has given us some stuff and we don't have to understand it. Like some of us, some of us are not even walking in the entirety of what he calls, what we talk about kingdom living. Because we don't got no understanding about it. We ain't read it. We think that, okay, hey, you got salvation, and that's it. I received the Holy Spirit, and that's it. But if you don't have no understanding, you can have all these gifts and talents and tools that God has given you, and you're just sitting on them. Mm. We don't have no understanding. We have understanding here. We got to be careful Amen. of our words. Now we go to verse 61. It says, when Jesus knew in himself that the disciples complained, 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 complained. We'll talk about complaining about this. He said to them, does this offend you? Amen. Now, depending on the, on the, on the, on the version, again, complain can either mean grumble. Right. Yeah. Right. So you may say they grumble. And then you remember back when they were, when we were uh, again, several weeks ago, we were talking about complaining. They did the same thing. The children of Israel did the same thing when they got fed the manna. Are y'all complaining again? Yeah. Right. And then Jesus had to say, come on, man, all these folks died. You got fed when Moses fed us, and Jesus said, no, Moses didn't feed you. You got fed from my father, but they understand it was off. Yeah. And then y'all going to complain? Listen, to complain. That's why sometimes it's better to keep your mouth shut. To complain and to grumble or whine is to sin. Yeah. You ever heard people say, <laughs> y'all don't be mad at me because y'all be saying it to me. I ain't going to complain because it ain't going to do, no, uh, ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> yes, it is. It's going to mess something up. <laughs> so just keep, don't, just don't say nothing. Say, speak life. Yeah, amen. Change was coming out your mouth. Yeah. If I complain, they're going to do it. Yes, it will. It will really mess some stuff up if you yeah. complain. Especially for believers. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 62. 
It says, what then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? Jesus is saying, wait, I will prove to you all that I have taught by my resurrection and ascension. The resurrection and ascension answered many of the disciples' questions. So I want you to think about this. Some of the disciples did not get it until Jesus was resurrected. Mm -hmm. Some of the disciples didn't understand it until his ascension. You got to think they didn't understand it. So when they think about this, when they came and got Jesus, and Jesus had some twelve disciples, what we don't want to call they was pretty rough. Yeah. So you have one when they came, they said, "Hey, where is Jesus?" One did the what, what was, was that Thomas? Who was that that cut the ear off? Peter. 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 Yeah. And then then you had the other one that just moved on out. <laughs> I thought y'all was with me. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't part the they part the Red Sea, all right. Who, who is this one? Who is this Jesus among you? They just <laughs> wait a minute. I thought I thought y'all supposed to be my boys. Just to thank the grace and the mercy that God has, like man. Oh, your accent spoke really loud, then. Yes, Verse 64 says, but there are some of you who do not believe. The reason why I continue to bring up that first chapter in John mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was because it sets the foundation. He knew like some of you guys just not going to believe. He said, for Jesus knew from the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He knew from the beginning. Hey, uh, man, hey, y'all, everybody ain't going to believe this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to understand this. <clears throat> He said, for he knew from the, from the beginning who they were, who did not believe in him, and who would betray him. Yeah, yeah. Jesus knew, speaks once again of his divine knowledge of all men. What he knew was that some of them did not believe. Mm -hmm. Jesus recognized from the very beginning, now here we go with this word, the apostasy mm -hmm. would be a consistent problem for the church. Yeah. What is the apostasy? The great God. Jesus knew, like, we can look at our sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, no, that's not, that may not be factual because this is the second time we come back. So, no, don't look at our sanctuary right now. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you can look at folks' sanctuary. Oh, yeah. And you can tell, and sometimes, and you got to think, sometimes you get to thinking about people, be like, man, they were in and they were out. He knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The apostles be a consistent problem in the church. He said, the first indication, I like this, and the first indication was when he spoke of the parable of the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to read that one. It says, another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed. And this is Matthew 13, uh, for your scripture, Matthew 13, 24 through 30. He says, but while men slept, his enemy, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. Brother went and got his field ready while he was asleep. Mm -hmm. They put some stuff on mm -hmm. the tears. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, right. then the tears also appeared. Right. So the servant of the owner came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? Mm -hmm. He said to them, an enemy has done this. Well, I digress for a moment. So just because you call it, just because you call yourself a Christian, just because you do believe dumb, doesn't mean that you will not have challenges. Doesn't mean that the enemy is going to leave you alone. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. you are now. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so now as we see again, pre-COVID, we see who stuck in and who didn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. You kind of see like, wait a minute, you was deacon. Brother so and so, you were sister so. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. They just, no. What? The tears. Yeah. 28 says, He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to them, Do you want us to go and gather them up? <laughs> he said, No. Listen, while you gather them up, you uproot the wheat yeah. in them. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, you can go in, and I, I love, so we go back to Scripture in John, when people get offended. Mm -hmm. Like, some of the folks, all right, gee, if you knew what he was talking about, if you understood what he was saying, mm 
understood. He's like, man, he's not trying to offend me. Mm -hmm. He's trying to save me. Mm -hmm. But then you have some folks, oh, he tripped the pastor going off, or, yeah. not, or not even the pastor. My leader is having an issue, and they, mm -hmm. and they leave yeah. the tear. It's like, no, y'all, where you understanding that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. It says, but let <laughs> let both grow together until the harvest yeah. and the time to come. I will say to the reapers, first gather the tares mm -hmm. and bind them in bundles See. and then burn them. Ooh. What? <laughs> I like the commentary. I wish I had on the camera. I wish I could like, ooh. What? <laughs> But gather the wheat into the barn. There you go. Our own, if you, if you, and again, we're talking about the apostasy on your own. Read the book of Jude. We never hear about the book of Jude too much. The book of Jude is essentially focused on the apostates. And so we got the de uh, definition of the apostasy. The book of Jude, in Jude 16, it says, these are grumblers, mm -hmm. complainers, mm -hmm. walking according to their own lust. Mm -hmm. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. Mm -hmm. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. But guess, think about it. It says these are apostates. Mm -hmm. So you can be in a church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, the truth is rough. Yeah. You can be in a church. And brother apostle will be an apostate, and mm. he has said some really nice words. What? And it says, "These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage." Mm. Yeah. Mm. So then, that's what we call it. Then we get back to the discussion about church hurt. Mm. Yeah. Okay, now for that. And then sixty-five, it said, and he said, therefore, and this is Jesus again. Now we're back on John. 60, excuse me, 65, 6 and 65. Mm -hmm. And he said, therefore, I said to you that no one can come to me unless he has been granted to him by my father. Predestined, we had that discussion. Predestined means you were marked beforehand. It refers to God determining in eternity's past whatever comes to pass in history. In salvation, it means God has marked you out. He has marked certain people out to salvation in eternity's past. Ephesians 1 and 5 says, Having been predestined to adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to get to verse 6. This is where I want to get, and, and, and this is getting close to the close. This is where I want to get to. It said from that verse 66, and remember 6 and 66, mm -hmm. think about this. This to me, this is to me, mm -hmm. this is one of the saddest, the saddest passages in the world. Mm -hmm. Think about what, what, we're about, what I'm about to read. It said from that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. No more. That's sad. Yeah. <laughs> That's sad. Yeah. Remember, their understanding was off. What he kept doing is he kept having these discussions with them. And essentially, they said, hey, what this brother is preaching is, is, is harsh. <laughs> but really, he would just... It said, remember, the disciples that left are the new converts. Well, actually, they didn't even convert. Mm -hmm. The new learners, the new students. Mm -hmm. But think about what they went back to. Mm -hmm. Think about what they went back to. So if you get a chance, when you look at John 6 and go to all the other synoptic gospels, these people were poor. Yeah. These people were in sin. Yeah. <clears throat> they were sick. They were diseased. Matter of fact, if you want to break it down a little bit more, they was hungry. Y'all go back to that? Because you don't understand what the brother's saying? Wow. Think about in practical application, what we're talking about here. So you go back to addiction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go back to abuse? 
brother putting his hands on you or sister, because you got to say it both ways now, sister putting his hands on you, and you go back to that? Yeah. Right. Think about it. What y'all going back to? Y'all was hungry. Y'all the one falling after him. Y'all the one, think about it. They were the ones that said, hey, Jesus was the one that said, I got to get away from these folks because they're going to try to make me king. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you go back? Yeah. I tell you, I ain't going, man, I'm not going back. Amen. 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 Even though perhaps it may seem fun, mm. Mm. you know, because sin is fun for a moment. Yeah. Until you go to the doctor. Mm. It's like, hold on, brother. Uh -huh. Sin for a moment. I'm in new grade and I wake up, man. Ugh, ugh. Yeah. You going back to that? Yeah. Mm. The saddest scripture. Like, man, what y'all going back? What's out there? Wow. So I got two conclusions. We're going to do the next conclusion next week. <laughs> but as I close, I want you to think about this. If you look at the totality of the feeding of the 5,000, and you get to, because I want to get to 66, verse 66, this scripture states that they walk with him no more. The apostates, there is one major factor. So we're talking about their apostate, but I want you to think about it. This is what they said. They lack understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. They said it. Yeah. They said this is hard, what he's talking about. Who can understand this? <laughs> now I want you to think about this. When you lack understanding, mm -hmm. It's easy for you to walk in offense. Amen. You lack understanding. When you understand it all, and it goes, it, it goes across the board. You like, man, no, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. Yeah. And if you look what Jesus kept doing, he kept trying to break it down to them. And they were like, man, what you want him to do? He just fed you? Yeah. He just went over to the other side. Y'all came and followed him? Yeah. Right now? Then he's telling you, I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. Okay, y'all don't give me the bread of life. Okay, I'm the life that gives bread. Okay, y'all don't get that. Okay, drink of my blood. Eat of my flesh. What else do I need to do? Yeah. He kept bringing it down for him. Like, come on. When you lack understanding, it's easy for you to walk in the fence. Now, I, when, you, when you boil this down, <laughs> boil all this stuff down, boil it down. For 33 years, Jesus was on, on the earth for 33 years. And the only thing he was trying to do is get us to get our understanding right. Mm -hmm. That's all he was trying to do. Think about everything that he did. Think about the feeding of the 5,000. Think of the healing, the, the, the feeding of the, the healing of blind men, the, mm -hmm. the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. They had understanding, but all he was here to do was, hey, let me give you some understanding. And then this is the cool point. And you got a choice if you want to believe in me or not. Yeah. Yeah. You got a choice. Right. It said he showed compassion on them. That's next week. I'm not going to go there. But just think, he, he, that's all Jesus was doing. Mm -hmm. Man, let me give it. That's what God did. Hey, man, uh, Adam's understanding was bad. <laughs> so we got to fix this up. I'm going to produce myself and my son. I know it kind of sounds. I'm gonna produce myself, and I'm gonna come down here in the flesh. But I need you to get these folks understanding right, because what Adam done, we in trouble. So he comes down from the beginning. He even tells his mama, "You, you remember when he was in the uh, synagogue and Jesus got a spanking?" And he was like, "Man, y'all, y'all know what I'm down here for." And he said his mama kept it in her heart. Mm -hmm. Man, he came down. Focus. Hey, I, this, is, this is the plan. I got to give these folks some understanding. Mm -hmm. And when you boil it all down, the feeding of the 5,000, all of it, man, let me give you some understanding. But then you have a choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, as I close, close, 
Because that was the first close, the second close. This is really close. <laughs> close, close. You, 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 you got a choice. And so because we got about 10 people here, I'm, I'm pretty sure that everybody in here has a relationship with Jesus. So the invitation is, Are you reading the word? Are you getting your understanding? The invitation. <laughs> Are you really serious about this call that you have in your life? The invitation. Are you are you walking in kingdom living? Or do you understand what it means? When you say, I'm saved. Do you understand that once you say that you automatically become, you are the seed of Abraham and there's blessings and stuff that are supposed to happen to you in your life. Mm -hmm. What I don't want to happen and what I will not, that, what will not allow to happen here is we don't get an understanding of it because there are some things in our lives. There's a level of victory and you just won't keep talking about it. <laughs> I love y'all. Yeah, just keep on. Just hear mama. Okay, just everybody just look at mama. <laughs> what well, happened to my mama and I love her. I'm glad she's here. But you gonna stop talking loud. I'll put the microphones right there. I'm gonna have to edit that out of the video. <laughs> we love you, Lord. Come on, let's stand in front of Talk about. We can move you feel. You the courtesy. We can play slow. We gonna play. We can hear you. Y'all got microphones. I gotta do cut the microphone now. Cause his mute. Cut it down, y'all. This is our first time. Yeah, we rolling. Hey, so hey, this is what we do. We gonna have a good time here. We gonna tell the truth and we gonna get on the matter here. What time is it? Oh yeah, it's just twelve o'clock. Oh my goodness, God, it's so good. We're done. Uh, if you need prayer, uh, raise your hand. We got it. I got it. Okay, I got double hands back there. I got one. Okay, you put it. You, you, I got it. Um, because we're social distancing and all that stuff, there won't be no touching and laying on the hand. <laughs> but I will say, what I will say is this, whatever you're praying about, put that in the forefront of your head. Mm -hmm. And you cast that cast you throw it. Think about uh, 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 I don't know if y'all fish. You casting it on and you putting it you cast it on God. And so what I'm going to pray for is for either answers, relief this is what I'm praying for. You get an answer you get, a, you get relief or you get revelation of what you're going through because it may be a test. But we do know it. God don't tempt but he does test. So it may be, and you may be in one of those modes. But I'm also gonna pray that you have strength, because regardless of what people say, as we talked about it earlier, you can call yourself a Christian, you can call yourself a believer, it still don't mean that any man ain't gonna try. But but with our words, you remember we talked about complaining and murmuring with our words. You're like, hold on, and we have the power. I want to throw my mic. You have the power. We have the power to bind the enemy. Amen. We got the power. We got we got that power. Some of us, the enemy is just stepping in. Like, man, what's going on? Bind them. Yes, yes. Get ye behind me. I can't say what I say in my private time, because I go, like, ooh, did you really not? They have different words for the enemy. And they're not scriptural. Get away from me. Get away from me, my family, my Amen. wife, my kids, Amen. my money, yes. Amen. our church. Amen. Get away. Amen. You have no, before I come, oh, before we come here, there's a confession of faith. Lord, protect all this going on over here. Amen. So whatever you're going through, think about it from that perspective. This is a test. Going through this, and 
I need a revelation about some stuff. If, do I need to do I need to bind the enemy away from this situation? Or watch this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Or is there somebody I need to talk to that got some understanding on it? And I'm not ashamed to say, hey, sister, hey, brother, I don't get this. Yeah. Can you help me with this? Can you can, can I get some can you? And you and you and you and and, and, and and God gives you the right people to make that phone call to. Let, let me talk to you. How, how did you deal with this situation? Yeah, you gotta go through it like this. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you for the answer. Because the answer may be somebody else. Or the answer may be, hey man, you better be quiet and just go through it. You just chill out. Not get comfortable in it. Just like, all right, we're going to roll, roll with it like this. I said this before and I keep saying it again. Sometimes it's just you and the Lord. And actually, for me, that's the best because I know I ain't got to be talking to nobody who don't know what they talk talking about. So I ain't got to misconstrue. Hey, sister so-and-so, I was led to talk to you. Okay. But that ain't what, that's not scripture. So I, I don't need to be talking to you. Sometimes you have to go and get in the word for yourself. You have to go get on your knees. You got to go get in the closet. Amen. 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 Get on your knees. Sometimes you need to pray yourself out. Yes, yes, yes. And you're expecting other folks to pray. No, you're in this, you're in this season right now. And keep me while I'm in this season. That I don't go crazy. Yes. That I don't go crazy on them. Keep me in this season, Lord. Amen. Give me patience. Give me compassion. Amen. Don't let me be offended in this season. Oh, blessed Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, Lord, thanking you, Father, for today. You know the people, Father God, that have asked for prayer. Truth is, we all need it. But the people with the specific prayer, Father God, Give them answers. Holy Spirit, we depend on you. That small voice that's inside of us that gives us answers, that gives us knowledge. We're depending on you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for you answering or covering. Actually, it's all covering. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have shown us in your word how to handle situations. Lord, we bless you. We honor you. You are good to us, Father God. We appreciate you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving them answers. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving them resources. Thank you, Father God, for you giving them like the, the steps, the process and procedure, the steps, how to deal with that situation, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you, gave, you have given us a word that is applicable to our lives, Father God, whatever state that we're in. Thank you, Father God, that you said, hey, get somebody to help you with that resume. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you said, hey, no, go get a second opinion. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you said, no, nah, don't spend that money over there. You need to put that back. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you say, hey, no, that child is good. You just pray for them. They need to bang their head. I ain't going to let them die, but they are going to have some stitches. They're going to be just fine. Thank you, Father God, you've given us the... Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you said, no, they can pay their own bills. No, they come to you to, they come to, you to ask for uh, some help with their bills. No, you need to budget like I budget. And that we're strong enough not to get offended when they say something icky about us. And we know, Father God, it's just because they didn't get what they wanted. We love you, Lord. You are good. Thank you, Lord, you told that child. Hey, man, you need to do that homework over. You can't turn that in. Thank you, Father God, that you tell them the marriages. Hey, baby, just talk. You're giving them answers. Hey, come on, let's just talk about this. We love you, God. We honor you. And praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say amen. amen.
Did you enjoy today's message? Please give a love offering. Simply go to NewTestamentBibleChurch.com, click the online giving link, and click Give Now. Type in your amount and complete the rest of the form. Thank you for your donation. The journey of life is often unpredictable, and it is important to know your purpose in it. Receive Jesus today and learn about his plan for you. He is eagerly waiting to be a part of your life. The first step is salvation. Read Romans 10 and 9 and repeat this prayer. God in heaven, I believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for me and that you raised him from the dead. Jesus, I call on you now as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of all my sins. I will trust and follow you for the rest of my life. Amen. We look forward to you joining us for our next broadcast. Have a blessed week.